it's uh, still doing getting it, but we're almost there. Good evening, everyone. I'm so excited to be coming live with you tonight with the members of our Youth Environmental Leadership Program. I'm Stephanie and I am the Coastal Education Coordinator at 100 Miles. And tonight I get to introduce our Yelp students and their presentation on how students tips for sharing the beach with sea turtles and shorebirds. There'll be time at the end for questions. So please enter your questions into the comment box and we'll get to them at the end. And without further ado, here are some of our Yelp students. Hey everyone, my name is Rachel Walters. I live in Brunswick, Georgia. I'm in 11th grade and I go to Glen Academy High School. Hello everyone, my name is Griffin Lee and I live on St. Simons Island, Georgia. I'm a sophomore from Glen Academy and I'm very excited to be here today to present to all of you. Thank you. Hi guys, my name is Lexington Kozak Baumgartner and I'm from Hinesville, Georgia and I'm a senior who's homeschooled right now and I can't wait to share with you guys tonight. So what is Yelp? We are a part of the Youth Environmental Leadership Program, nicknamed Yelp. There are 17 teenagers, ages 15 to 18, all over the Georgia coast, uh, from St. Mary's up to Tybee Island. The team is run by 100 Miles, which is a coastal nonprofit working to protect and preserving Georgia's coast through advocacy, uh, education, and citizen engagement. Uh, they focus on core issues like water and wetlands, changing climate, and wildlife protection. So as a part of Yelp, we are trained and empowered to be environmental advocates. Uh, this year, uh, we chose to focus on uh, raising awareness for uh, sea turtles and shorebirds. Um, so today, we are thankful to be talking to you about the tips on how to share the beaches with them. Before we begin, I want to talk about the beautiful coast and why it's so unique. Georgia is a part of the Georgia Bight, which ranges from Florida all the way up to North Carolina. Uh, because of the continental shelf, Rachel, can you start again from the slide? I can't hear you. I can't hear you either. Uh oh, go away. Can you hear me now? Yes. That's okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> um, before we begin, I want to talk about the beautiful coast and why it's so unique. Georgia is a part of the Georgia Bight, which ranges from Florida all the way up to North Carolina. Because of the continental shelf, we have low waves and shallow waters. This causes our coast to have well-defined barrier islands, sandbars, mudflats, and inlets. Um, so there's a lot of sediment and nutrients that flows into our waters and uh, makes it very dynamic for the landscape. This provides great food resources and living spaces for both shorebirds and sea turtles. So what are some of the major environmental issues facing the Georgia coast? Well, one of the most threatening problems is habitat loss, which is due largely to overdevelopment and urban sprawl. This destroys the habitat that native species need to live. Another problem is habitat disturbance, which can take many forms, uh, such as pollution, driving on the beach, the introduction of invasive species, jetties, and overfishing. Of course, climate change is also tremendously affecting the Georgia coast, uh, and it also results in rising sea levels which flood habitat for wildlife. Next slide. So what can you do to help combat these issues and protect uh, specifically shorebirds? So first of all, shorebirds are simply birds that live on the beach and or the marsh. And in Georgia, some of our shorebirds include royal terns, piping plovers, sandpipers, black skimmers, uh, American oyster catchers, red knots, and many, many more. The leading factors for shorebird decline are habitat loss and disturbance. And you can help protect our shorebirds and keep them alive and healthy uh, by 
and starting by keeping your dogs on a leash, uh, staying off the dunes, um, refraining from using your vehicles on the beach, which scare, scare away birds, um, and never chase the birds or feed the birds as well. Sea turtles are also a common beach dweller. Sea turtles are marine reptile which have large shells and flippers for swimming. As of right now, seven sea turtles, there are seven sea turtle species, all of which are considered endangered or threatened. But there are things that we can do to help these species locally. Loggerhead sea turtles are the main species that nest along Georgia's coast. And occasionally even a green turtle or leatherback will nest here too. If you want to do your part in protecting these species, here's some tips for you. For one, lights out. The hatchlings naturally want to go towards the brightest thing, which in nature would be the ocean, but with artificial lighting, it confuses them and they go the wrong direction. So we can use red light, which they can't see nearly as well, and it's safe to use on the beach, especially in the dark. Another thing is driving on the beach, which can uh, increase the erosion and destruction of these habitats that these birds and sea turtles both need. Next is, it is kind of sad, but we do have to knock down our sandcastles and fill in those holes we dig. Sea turtles and baby hatchlings can get caught up in the holes and become trapped, and it's dangerous for them. And also just make sure you pick up your trash. Sea turtles can mistake trash for a food source such as jellyfish and it blocks up their digestive system as well as they can get trapped in it. And that a lot, it can kill a lot of sea turtles. Um, and please do not touch the nest. For one, it's considered very illegal. And for two, when you touch a hatchling, it can decrease the likelihood of its survival. Uh, and of course, it's really fun bringing your animal or your pet to the beach, but we have to keep them on a leash for the protection of these creatures as they can go after them, chase them, which disturbs them greatly. Uh, next slide. It's essential that we are or that we share our beaches for the sake of these animals. The beaches are their nesting grounds and for the sea or, or seabirds, they need it for a food source as well. Uh, sometimes a little can do a lot and using some of these simple tips can save lives. Sharing the beach with these sea turtles and seabirds it allows them to reproduce peacefully and is the best way to be, become a part of the solution instead of the problem. If you have any questions, please let us know. Well, great. I've already learned so much, but we did get some questions come in. My first question I would need, and I can go to all of you, um, but we'll start with Lexi. Um, which is your favorite sea turtle or shorebird? Ooh, I like a lot of birds. I can't pick a favorite with that one. And the sea turtles, I've, I've actually fed a loggerhead, so I'm going to go with that for now because I, I've seen them up close and they're really cool creatures. And we fed them little frozen um, shrimp cubes, which is really fun. <laughs> well, that's cool. Rachel, what's your favorite? Um, I really like the American oyster catcher. Uh, I think the beak is really, really uh, pretty. Um, I probably prefer the, um, for the sea turtles, the, uh, the loggerhead as well. So that's cool. And Griffin? Um, my favorite shorebird is also the American oyster catcher. Uh, the orange, I think their orange beak is very, very pretty. And they also use their beak to, uh, it's, in, it's their namesake, oyster catcher to, uh, Eat the insides of oysters. Sometimes their oyster, the oyster will actually close on them, and their beak can get stuck in the oyster. <laughs> um, they're very long and skinny to uh, reach inside. And I think my favorite uh, sea turtle, although it is hard to choose right now, would be the leatherback because it, it is the biggest sea turtle. Um, a thousand pounds. <laughs> yeah, very heavy. So there was a second part to that question, and it was: Have any of you seen sea turtles in the wild? Yes. I have, I went to Hawaii and I saw both, um, I saw, I believe I saw a green sea turtle and another one, but I forgot which kind it was. I saw two different ones in the wild in Hawaii though. And we got really scared because we found one that was on the beach and just sitting there and it looked really dried out, but we were, it's illegal to touch them. So we didn't mess with them, but we were really worried about him. <laughs> and Griffin, you said you've also seen them? 
Uh, yes, man. I, I've actually been lucky enough to see them lay eggs, which is really uh, incredible. And I've also seen a few when I'm on the on the water before. Uh, so, yeah. That is pretty cool. So the question that was kind of part of that, Griffin, I'll let you continue answering it. And it says, do sea turtles nest here on the Georgia coast? And can we see them on our beaches? Yes, you can. Although they, although they do typically nest at night. Um, and if you do see one when you're on the beach, uh, don't touch it um, or get too close because if they are going to nest, you can scare them away and they will go back in the water. And if you're on the beach at night, please use a red flashlight. <laughs> Yeah, those are great tips. Again, yeah, if you do happen to be lucky enough to see a nesting female, yeah, give it lots of space because they do get scared easily and you want to make sure they have plenty of room to lay their eggs. Um, Rachel, why do you think so many sea turtles and so many shorebirds like to nest on beaches here in Georgia? Um, well, a lot of our beaches are undeveloped, which provides uh, great sites for them to nest and feed. Um, I know shorebirds uh, for the Georgia coast, we have a lot of horseshoe crab eggs. And so they will feed on that. And after they, um, after a couple of months, they like, they grow and they get uh, heavy and then they, they fly up north uh, to Canada or south all the way to uh, Peru and Brazil. So definitely the um, undeveloped beaches and all the resources that we have. Awesome. Um, I'm going to ask this to all of you, but we'll start with Lexi. Why did you decide to work on this issue project as part of your 100, uh, part of your being part of the Yield program this year? <laughs> uh, for me personally, I'm very passionate about um, keeping these animals alive. I want future generations to be able to see these amazing creatures, as well as I just care a lot about the environment. I believe that we as people are a part of nature as well. And for our own benefit, we should be taking care of our environment. Rachel, why, why have you chose to help work on this project? Um I wanted to be a part of Yelp because I'm really passionate about conservation and education. I felt this was a way for me to do my part and um, to encourage others to do the same. And Griffin? Um, well, I've been lucky enough to grow up on the Georgia coast uh, my whole life and I've seen these animals firsthand, like I said earlier with the sea turtles and I've been lucky enough to see the shorebirds as well. And like Rachel and uh, Lexi, I'm very passionate about preserving these animals. I think they're uh, a special gift to us on the coast. And I think it's our duty to uh, stand up for them and protect them for future generations. And then before we leave, what is the most important tip to you guys that, they, that people can do to help? Just to reiterate, what is one of your most important, Lexi? Uh, I believe that one of the most important things is when you see these creatures in the wild, just to give them space and just try to, if you want to watch them, that's all right, as long as you watch from a distance, but try not to disturb them while they're in their natural habitat and they're trying to lay their eggs or take care of their nests or that sort of thing. Griffin? Um, I would say the most important tip for people to keep in mind when they're on the beaches uh, in regards to shorebirds is to stay away from shorebird nesting areas, which are typically located in the dunes and keep their pets on leashes and away from these nesting areas. Uh, pets and people can harm fledgling shorebirds and or destroy the eggs uh, when trespassing into their nests. And uh, remember, if the area is uh, signed as a nesting area, please stay away. And Rachel, any last words you wanna share? Um, probably to mitigate your uh, lights. Um, definitely it affects uh, sea turtles a lot. So any way that you could turn off your flashlight or somehow turn off um, any other lights in the area would probably do them a lot of help um, to keep them coming back and to repopulating so they aren't going to be endangered. Um, and so that we have you know, sea turtles for the rest of our lives. So lights out. <laughs> Well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much to um, Rachel, Lexi, and Griffin for sharing all those wonderful tips. And then thank you all who watched us tonight and asked questions and all also your great comments and um, that you've given our students here this evening. If you are curious about the Yelp program or the Youth Environmental Leadership Program, you can visit our website at 100 miles slash Yelp. Um, or if you want to keep up to what these fabulous students are doing, you can follow them on their own Instagram at OA underscore Yelp. 
Well, we look forward to hearing from you in the future and everyone else have a wonderful night. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.